advice. The opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. stand on one's shoulders, or to have one for a friend, though these may be fortunate things, but to be one. Giants step over barriers that seem never-ending. They conquer mountains that appear insurmountable. Giants rise above fear, triumph over pain, push themselves, and inspire others. Be a giant, to do giant things, to take giant steps, to move the world forward. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Philippines Uncut. I'm your host, Buddy Kunana. Now, in this show, we talk about everything under the sun, and tonight's topic is about sports. Now, folks, we've all been witness to the recently concluded Summer Games, Olympic Games in London. And uh, in these games, the Philippines once again garnered zero medals. No bronzes, no silvers, and definitely no gold medals. Now, tragic as, as it may be, many Filipinos have grown accustomed to this, even expecting the national team to perform dismally in, in international sporting events. Now, last week, in our search for, the, for questions on why the Philippines is a laggard in sports, we had Mr. Go Teng Kok, who is the president of the Philippine Amateur Track and Field Association, and Ms. Susan Papad, who is the president of the Philippine Swim League. Now, tonight, in our quest to find answers to why the Philippines is perform performing poorly in sports, we have, once again, a, uh, a very uh, distinguished personality and very much involved in sports, Attorney Marilu Arzaga Mendoza. Welcome, Attorney Mendoza, once again, to Philippines Uncut. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here one more time. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I remember our, our discussion last year, also in this program, where we talked about what was bedeviling Philippine swimming. But tonight, we're going to talk about not just swimming, but the entire sports mm -hmm. program in the country. Yes, yes. Gladly. Y yes. Now, um, ma'am, let's start with an introduction of yourself. Tell us about your involvement in sports. Okay. Well, currently, uh, I was asked uh, by the office of Senator Trillanes to uh, sit down in the discussion for a proposed bill that um, uh, he's uh, trying to endorse uh, because of the lackluster performance of the recently concluded Olympic Games. And uh, there have been some uh, issues that arose um, a year ago, and uh, there have been um, Congress and uh, Senate inquiries where I was asked to be uh, one of those resource speakers to shed light. And likewise, too, uh, what I thought is very uh, significant, uh, Buddy, is because I was a swimmer myself. I represented the Philippine flag many, many years ago uh, in different international uh, competitions in swimming. Yeah. So my heart belongs to sport. Aside from being a lawyer, it's an added um, factor, of course, because there's an interplay of laws that now I understand. It's not only understanding the law, but understanding the sentiment of an athlete, and perhaps even as a leader, yes. as we may call it that way. Yes. Yes. What has swimming given to you personally? Oh, yes. Uh, swimming took me all over the world. Um, swimming gave me confidence. Uh, swimming becomes a very important element in my being a lawyer. Uh, I am a litigator right now, buddy, and uh, I think my being very aggressive and competitor, I would say because of what swimming brought me into. Yes. So um, <coughs> discipline is very important. Likewise, I'm a team player. Yes. 
And uh, you cannot practice law if you're not an alert and healthy citizen as envisioned in our Constitution. So basically, swimming gave me a, uh, a multi-array uh, of, of, uh, of product yes. that I could stand, stand before anyone else. And, and I thought it's, it's a gift from God. Yes. And, and, and I'm very proud of it. And that is why in every invitation, like, of course, this one, or by our government, I would always make time. Um, if I can give my two cents worth, why not? Yes. Uh, I, I feel confident because I've had the experience. I feel confident because I understand the law. And why should I refuse because of what swimming gave me to? Yes. Now, clearly, you, you're really in a good position to talk about this topic. Now, um, you know, a lot of the confusion with the problem that arises from the problem concerning sports is in the interplay of the different agencies involved and the lack of understanding of many people, me included until recently, about uh, you know, what these organizations are, what are these associations, what are their duties and responsibilities. Now, can you help us define um, how all these organizations work with each other? Starting with, let's say, the, the very top, let's talk about the IOC. What is the International Olympic Committee? Okay, the International Olympic Committee is an international governing body uh, that oversees um, different uh, recognized Olympic committees of different countries. Now these are the ones tapped, or they are the sole coordinating and policy making body in international organizations, international competitions, where the, the laws, the rules, and the policies of international Olympic committee are involved. So these are the um, Olympic Games, uh, these are the uh, Asian Games, Southeast Asian Games and other uh, recognized international competitions by the IOC. Okay. Now, these, uh, since IOC is an international governing body for these Olympic Games, it, uh, it likewise um, solicits uh, representatives from different participating countries. Like for instance, our, our very own Philippines. The Philippines has its own uh, Philippine Olympic Committee, okay. which is the so-called POC mm -hmm. in short. Mm -hmm. Now that uh, coordinates with the International Olympic Committee and likewise it is the recognized body in the Philippines as well as the International Olympic Committee, okay. the POC. Yes. What is the responsibility now of the POC? Now uh, in its charter, uh, I believe POC uh, is um, involved in the uh, Philippine Olympic Games, um, if you have to be very particular on its functions, of course they choose the uniforms, they, they coordinate with uh, POC and some NSAs as to uh, who will be the uh, representatives for, for our country. They are actually the conduit of the International Olympic Committee for whatever disciplines or, or policies that the International Olympic Committee would like to go ahead and deliver to different countries. Okay. So they are the representative in our country. Okay, so the POC is a non-government organization. It's not a government agency. It's a non-government organization, organization. And you mentioned the NSA, the National Sports Associations. Okay. What is the relationship now of the NSAs with the POC? Okay. Again, I'd like to go ahead and resort to their charter. They use the word umbrella uh, organization, that the POC is the umbrella organization of the NSA, which I do not understand. When you talk about umbrella, you talk about it's a centralized <coughs> or, or uh, 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 the center body. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. perhaps particularly on, on Olympic Games, uh, but it should not take hold of other policies where, the, it, where, where PSC has jurisdiction over. Um, no. Before we go to PSC, yes, yes. let's define first what the, what the role is between NSA, with the NSAs and the yes. POC. NSA is likewise a private entity okay. body, okay. which uh, each NSA has its own uh, discipline, okay. like sports. Like okay. swimming is uh, Philippine Amateur Swimming Association, and then there is the PATAFA, the Philippine Amateur uh, Track and Field Association, and field, Mr. Volleyball. Gold. So these are uh, private entities involved in specific sports, okay. uh, which primarily uh, is supported uh, as far as funds are concerned by our very own PSC. The Philippine Sports, sports Commission, Commission, which is a government agency. It is a government agency. 
it, its uh, personality is emanating from a, uh, a statutory and constitutional mandate. So it is a government body which is the sole policy and coordinating body on all sports programs, okay. sports education, sports competitions, because you know specifically it is um, it is actually couched in a particular provision of our constitution in the Declaration of State Policies, where the state is mandated yes. to promote sports education, okay. competitions, leagues okay. that will foster self-discipline, teamwork, uh, excellence, to enable every citizen to become alert and healthy yes. in nation building. <coughs> yes. In fact, concomitant with that body, there is also a constitutional provision that every educational entity shall have sports activities that will be coordinating with, with all of these sports programs of the state. Is the PSC doing this? Doing all this, this coordinating, doing, making sure that the, the youth are, are being uh, are engaged in sports and developing sports? Is the PSC doing this? Well, if, uh, let me answer this way, buddy. If it were, <laughs> then there shouldn't be any problem. Yes. There shouldn't be any problem. Yes, yes. But for now, I don't think so. Uh, whoever is the leader, I think Mr. Richie Garcia, is clueless on its role. Uh, he has breached not only the Constitution, but the very essence of its personality, the Republic Act, by which this PSC is created. Mm -hmm. Now, he has a supervisory, and he has a um, visitorial power as far as the fund infusion is concerned. Yes. It's very important because um, almost all NSAs yes. have breached the policies laid down. Yes. But what is the guy doing? The guy is purely a lame duck. Yes, yes. Well, before we go into that, let's okay. explain to the audience. What is the interplay between the PSC, the POC, and the NSAs? How do these three um, sort, of, sort of work with each other yes, or coexist? Yes. What is the relationship between the three? So the money comes from the PSC. Now, how is this somehow channeled to the, to, to, to the NSA? Does it go through the POC? Okay. What is the uh, in procedure? The, in the charter of uh, uh, PAGCOR, which is, again, a, uh, an entity of the government, there are uh, percentages of its profits or even its income uh, that are mandatorily uh, obliged to uh, infuse to uh, Philippine Sports Commission, okay. such as what? Its uh, gross income, 5% of its gross income, should be allocated to the Philippine Sports Commission. That's a lot. Yes. yes. Uh, well, the PAG Corps sponsors at least uh, this Philippine Charity Sweepstakes raffle. Yes. Um, a certain percentage, if I'm not mistaken, about 3% of the six lottery tickets should likewise be infused the Philippine Sports Commission. Oh, okay. The sale of uh, Philippine stamps, okay. where sports are actually promoted, that should all belong to Philippine Sports Commission. The importation of sports gear, likewise, should be inf infused to Philippine Sports Commission. Wow. Now, with this money, aside from some sectors of the private uh, entities, uh, all of this are thrown to Philippine Sports Commission. That's a lot of money. Yes, which in turn, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a great responsibility. Um, it, you need someone who has a working knowledge of how to distribute this for the betterment of sports. Now, the PSC is obviously sitting on a big pot of money. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, every time uh, we talk to athletes, there's always the same cry, oh, there's no money, there's no funds. So clearly there is money. If you said percentage of PAGCOR, percentage of PCSO, yes. importation of sports equipment, yes. there is yes. money there yes. available yes. for athletes. Uh, now, is it, is, it, is it filtering down to, I mean, from what you see, is it, is it filtering down to where the money is supposed to go? It should be because that's a constitutional mandate. Yes. Yes. And if it's not, uh, buddy, yes. if it's not, the leader himself, should cry out loud and say, hey, we're not receiving this. Where's our money? So, yeah, yes. so that the people may know, mm. so that the lawmakers mm. may mm. know, so that the president will know mm. that such uh, earmarked uh, income mm. is not going to PSC if mm. that's the case. Yes, yes. Because I, I, I heard that in the past administration, there were some earmarked uh, funds coming from what I've mentioned, 
that were not allocated to the PSC, or better yet, they were um, uh, diminished or subtracted, but primarily given to government employees. Mm. Now, uh, my point, if I were the head of that particular uh, entity, say for example, Philippine Sports Commission, this is a constitutional and statutory mandate. If the guy, as a leader, knows what he's fight doing, for it. you better yes. believe it. He can sue whoever yes. a government leaders are breaching. DBM, the Department of Budget you Management. It. He yes. should but if the guy does not know, if the guy is clueless, then what's the sanction? Yes. Nobody will even know. Yes. Now, going back to the money trail, okay, so from PSC, how does this filter in down to the NSAs? Does it have to pass through the POC? Yes. I mean, or and what is the relationship between the POC and the NSAs? Like, for, for instance, I assume there's one NSA per sport. Yes. So I assume that the POC will have to sign off on, or recognize each, and each organization that wants to become an NSA. Of course. Okay. Uh, absolutely, buddy. From PAGCOR infused to PSC, okay. PSC now has the uh, discretion or even the power to distribute equally, or if not equally, depends on his discretion as to which NSA will be needing most okay. where our potential is greater okay. for the for the for the country to uh, to have a better deal yes. now he has uh, the, the PSC has the sole discretion to distribute the funds to all of these NSAs and POC has nothing to do with it in fact POC will just go ahead and make a claim now listen we are uh, uh, sending um, an X number of delegate to an international event now Perhaps we're entitled per NSA this amount, I mean, this number of athletes. Yes. Now, all of this, they should be coordinating with one another. Mm -hmm. I mean, each one should not shy away from it. If POC will have a working idea on mm -hmm. how many athletes and how much each athlete uh, will be expending, it should coordinate with, um, with PSC. Oh, by the way, buddy, as yes. I'm saying this, reminds me too, did you know that IOC, the International Olympic Committee, many a times subsidizes some funds, infuses some funds to POC to help? Sometimes wow. they do sponsor. Okay. Now, again, being a government entity, but if you are transparent, you can make a full disclosure mm. yes. and say to PSC yes. about the money that you've obtained from an international organization like that. Can the PSC give to non-national sports associations? Let's say, for swimming, let's talk about swimming which is close to your heart, mm. PASA or the Philippine Amateur Swimming Association, I understand it's morphed to the Philippine Aquatic Something Association, now it's called Philippine Swim Inc. Or they yes. keep changing the name, I don't yes. know why. Yeah. But, okay, um, can the PSC give money to non-NSAs? Non you better believe it. The Constitution is very clear. It will develop. The state is mandated to develop sports activities, mm. education. Mm. Now, it has a soul. It has discretion. If you talk about body sports development, to foster healthy, alert citizens in whatever way it is, it should be exercised and it should be implemented in a way that is wide range, mm -hmm. nationwide. It should not be controlling and restrictive in nature. See what's happening, that's a very good point, buddy. What is actually happening right now amongst NSAs? I could talk about swimming. Okay. Swimming has become so restrictive in the sense that it imposes uh, membership funds, membership fees, so that if a Muslim brother who tops a, uh, a particular uh, uh, sports uh, styles in swimming, if unable to financially pay, yes. the miss, well, let's say, you know, uh, money is very objective. Yes. A million to you may yes. be less, a million to me may be less to you, buddy, no, it's not. right? <laughs> 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 I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> but again, yes. as I said, uh, that should not be the notion. Yes. If the Constitution mandates, the nationwide sports development. And such obligation is given to our very own PSC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, that should be viewed in a, in a, in a liberal, out of liberality. Yes, yes. If there is XYZ Philippine Inc. or XYZ Swimming uh, Organization, which has about even one athlete who tops most, 
Why not? Yes. At, at present, th that's, not, that's not what's happening. It is. Well, yes. when I say um, uh, the act of liberality in yes. adopting, yes. it's not happening. Let's either. say in terms of PASA, okay, let's say there is, as you said, a Muslim brother who is mm -hmm. very good at swimming, mm -hmm. but he is not a PASA member. Will he be a benef Will he receive funds from PSC? Will the PSC be able to then support him? Will he be Will he be able to compete overseas in IOC? P PSC must because yes. it's a mandate. Yes. However, it is not the case because once the NSA, the local NSA, like the Philipp the 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 PASA, whatever uh, sports that is, say for example swimming, and if he's not a member, no can do. Yes. Sorry, you're not a member. Yes. I mean, it, it should not be that way because. These athletes, once they qualify, they go out of the country, they carry the Philippine flag. Of course, of then course. why should it be restricted? Yeah. Where the mandate is so clear hmm. that it should promote nationwide. Hmm. You see, buddy, the problem here is this. Maybe you may ask the question, well, if you're saying it's a statutory and it's uh, constitutionally mandated, then how come it's not happening? You know why? Simply because the leader of that NSA and the leader of the PSC, which is the uh, government arm, are both clueless. Now, who's going to question? And if you question, who's going to listen? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are the implementors. Yes. And if the implementors are not going to do it, who is? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I suppose this is the time, while we're on the air, I think the President of the Republic of the Philippines should yes, implement, yes. Should, should oversee that this is implemented. It is very tiring, mm -hmm, buddy. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> why is the PSC, why does this PSC s seem so inutile or, or so powerless when it comes to, to directly handling or supervising sports? What is, what is the problem? Why is it that the POC seems to have more clout when it comes to sports than even the PSC, which is giving the money? Okay. I think it is not the entity because the entity is um, constitutionally and statutorily mandated. I think it's the incumbent leader. Now let's take the specific uh, experience or the situation right now. Mr. Richie Garcia, I cannot afford by, 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 but by mentioning sure, his name. Sure, please, please. Um, the talks have it that this Mr. Richie Garcia was uh, literally... The chairman of the PSC. The PSC okay. was actually uh, um, uh, put in by... Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Pepin Kuhuanko himself. Who is the? Who is the president of the POC? Okay. So there is that complete control. Now it's either the guy is clueless, the guy has no idea of what the functions of his office, or simply just cooperating with whatever impositions, whims, and caprice of uh, Mr. Pepin Kuhuanko. Yes. He's yes. at the mercy. Yes. Why should I squawk? Why me, Mr. Richie Garcia, squawk and go against POC, which is the very institution, the leadership of which put me on this? Yes, he would. Uh, he, he might you find see? himself out of a job. Uh, I mean, it's it's <laughs> facetious, uh, buddy. And uh, again, I would always say this: it's insensible. Mm -hmm. And for Mr. Richie Garcia, if if it truly the guy has a heart, I've seen him many times in the halls of Congress, in the halls of the Senate. I really want to look at him straight to the eyes. Do you really know? Or, do you, uh, or are you backing off because you owe some kind of, uh, of a debt of gratitude because of the position? Yes, you yeah. know, if I were the guy, I'd say, yes, I owe certain kind of debt of gratitude, but let me go ahead. I am in this position. Let me enforce what the law is. Yes. Or better yet, if I got no will, then don't, hey, thanks, but no thanks. Yes, I can see how the possible possible collusion could happen because you know if, if, if the POC uh, is the one that recognized an NSA yes. so without the uh, the recognition of the POC led by Mr. Kawanko mm -hmm. an NSA could be starred for funds or a group that wants to become that wants to receive government funds that should receive government funds you better believe could it, be star, star I mean could have a, those funds we withheld from it you better believe it buddy mm. but you see again that is a very very uh, 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 true uh, observation buddy and uh, one point that I could also want to stress out, although it's not sufficient, despite the fact that that is your observation and that is the truth, many of these NSAs, because of the desire of some of the leaders and even athletes themselves, they literally knock at the doors of some private sectors. They have no choice. No of choice. Of course, of course. You know, I was in uh, Senate about a month ago. I think it's the baseball team. Ladies baseball team, 
Uh, they landed first in the state of Ohio. I, I'm not too sure about it, but this was just like uh, in, in summer, summer games. They landed first. And you know what they were saying? They were paying courtesy call to Senator Trillianis. They did not have any funds. In fact, after a victorious landing, they were told that the funds for them for practice will be cut off. Is it lamentable? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, it's disgusting. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Well, um, on, on that note, I just want to point out also the fact, uh, the, the, the case of the Dragon Boat team yes. that went uh, and won actually in the United States. And uh, apparently all of their funds or most of the predominant uh, amount of their funds are from the private Target, sector. Private. So, yes. so uh, apparently these guys who've come, who've run the private sector for help, are actually even performing better in most, in a lot of cases. In, you're right. In, in no. fact, I said the truth lends to my statement earlier. Uh, that you, these athletes, will never run of energy. In fact, when you mentioned Dragon Boat, a couple of months ago, they again landed in an excellent performance. And I've read that the funds primarily came from uh, private sectors. And the Dragon Boat team today is actually, the Dragon Boat as a sport is being undermined, and we're going to talk about that when yes. we come back. We have to pause for a break, Attorney okay. Mendoza. Yes. Some more fireworks and more sports when Philippines Uncut returns.